I know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, okay. that was great. That's it. Let's just move on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Welcome to Everyone I Know, the, the podcast where I fuck up the delay part in the beginning. We're here in the Troy Castle, in the Troy Mansion, in the Troy Village, in the Troilet itself, at Brendan's beautiful abode that I hope that he doesn't I like mind. to think I'm up on the rim. You're on the rim? Yeah, I'm not in the Troilet. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in the higher elevation. <laughs> I'm here with my lovely producer, Brendan. Hey. And not my brother today because he is a sick boy and he's hanging home. So... Send your thoughts and prayers to him. Thank you. Um, we're here, and we're with a guest that we've been seeking after for a little while. Actually, probably a long time at this point, right? We're here. We're doing it. Hell yeah. It's Joe Bellicosa. Hey, hey guys. Joe, tell us about yourself. Um, I'm an Aquarius. and uh, <laughs> I like long walks on the beach. I love chicken McNuggets. Oh, and uh, I'm in love, actually. I love nuggies. <laughs> fictional technology. <laughs> Joe is a trivia host as well as a DJ. That's he, he can pretty do a accurate. Lot, he can do a lot of stuff for you, <laughs> but Joe is also a good man that I see every Thursday at the Poor House, uh, which, speaking of which, is our sponsor for this week. If you guys can't tell right now, I'm doing the whole intro because Chris isn't here. Um, if you want to get an audiobook, I guess, you can go to audibletrial.com forward slash EIK, and we will get no money for whatever. Um <laughs> But you can also go to the Madison Poorhouse uh, and drink a fine beer, especially on a Thursday night at 7 p.m. to see Joe Bellicosa <laughs> do the best trivia in town. And on a real note, Joe's trivia is actually really awesome. It's not like when was fucking Napoleon killed or exiled. It's like tr- tricks and puzzles. and Yeah, I hate trivia games. and I enjoy that trivia. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Wow. It's it's really good. You do a great job. Thank you. But uh, 7 p.m. at the Poorhouse. Uh on two, that's Thursday nights. On Tuesdays, you can go to Bombers and Schenectady to see Joe. Or on Wednesdays, you can go to Franklin Alley and Troy. So if you're in the Capital Region, there's no reason why you can't, you fool. Also, don't go to the ones earlier in the week and try to steal answers. <laughs> he figures it out. I like offset like the rounds now. Like I, yeah. you can't come and like get all of them at the beginning and like you know <laughs> write them down in your hand and bring go on to poor house on Thursday and win. Yeah, I hate the reason I don't like trivia usually is because um, I'll do great for like two topics yeah. and then I'm garbage. Yeah, I don't know anything about sports, so that's always my. Yeah, it's like okay, sports, I'm done. Yeah. Or like modern pop music, yeah. cool, okay. But even when those, when you get to near those topics, they're done in such a way where you, you don't can, feel like you're gonna lose yeah, just like, because it's a topic you do, don't know yeah, a lot about. I mean, sports is like something that I mean, I'm a sports fan. I would like to write more sports questions, yeah. but people don't really like. Yeah, we're so all a bunch much. of nerds. So like I won't I wouldn't like make like ten questions about sports, right? Yeah. Like I would just like slip some like sports references. Right. Somewhere. It'll be like like Yankees pitcher with something else that you can kind of work right, backwards yeah. and figure it out if you're, you know, a, a weak man. Yeah, and it's, you it's, can't it's, do it's about it. knowing multiple things and combining those things into the right answer. Using your goddamn brain. Okay, so uh, if you comment on our Instagram post this week with the secret hashtag we will come up with over the course of the episode, you will get a pint token for the Madison Poorhouse. Madison Poorhouse, you're going to love the way you drink. No old man minute this week, so we're pretty much running right into it. So without further ado, we're moving on now to topic, topic. Number, 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 one. That was a gnarly one. Yeah, it was gross. <laughs> that's, how I li- that's how I like my techno. It's gross. <laughs> Gritty, down and dirty. Yeah. I'm topic number one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, it's Saturday. It's 1 p.m. I'm a little bit out of it. Okay, so I, uh, so because... Joe is a trivia host, and Joe does great trivia. I was thinking about the great game show hosts of the modern era. Love game show hosts. I think that that's why I picked this topic. <laughs> so, Joe, you used to have the uh, the Bob Barker mic. Right, for, yeah. What happened to that? Did you beat um, someone over the head with it? Yeah, no, yeah. Somebody came up and, you know, complained about one of the answers, and I just <laughs> wrapped it around their neck. <laughs> Did you spay and neuter their pets yeah. for them, too? It's actually still in, located inside the person that was arguing with me. Um <laughs> No, I um one one night it was going fine, yeah, and then it just kind of like got quieter, okay, and then it just kind of died, and I'd just been too lazy to like you know get it fixed get or like one, get yeah. another one, yeah. So um, 
Yeah, I've just been rocking the regular microphone lately. Although I need to, I was actually just thinking about yeah, this. Gotta, yeah, gotta get that Bob Barker mic. Gotta get mic. it back, yeah. Um, okay, so come on down at D.I.K. Um, <laughs> uh, what's like your favorite game show? Like what's your favorite game show host or game show actual So like, yeah, I, I, when growing up, like I watch game shows all the time. Mm-hmm. And like I would rather be like the game show host than like the person playing. Yeah, for sure. Um, I would definitely say like, you know, being homesick from school, like couldn't wait till 11 o'clock and Price is Right came on. Oh, hell yeah. Um, but like there's some weird ones in there that like kind of like get like forgotten and like history. Oh, yeah. Um, there was one called Classic Concentration. I don't know if you remember that. Alex Trebek I, I hosted I another one. Oh, wow. And it was basically like like memory, right? So like they had like like 30 windows with like a number on each one and okay. like you'd say like one and seven. Okay. And then like it would be like a sailboat and like a you know, like an oven. <laughs> and then you'd have to remember like where the prizes were. And if you matched it up, you won that prize. Okay. And then like it revealed like two little windows to like a puzzle behind it. And you had to guess what the puzzle and was. And then at the end, like the puzzle was like a bunch of pictures that like added up to like some expression or something like that. And Interesting. And like, ended like the round. Um, yeah, that was awesome. That was one of my favorites. Uh, press Your Luck was always a favorite of mine. Yeah. <laughs> Just because of the no whammies, no whammies, no whammies, stop. And then like, you know, the animation yeah you know, it was terrific it was fucking it was like noid level like animation right. like it, it was just a little gross little mascot yeah they were really going off of like noid <laughs> popularity yeah exactly that like what about you brennan what's your favorite game show oh it was price is right price is right yeah, I, I grew up when i was growing up when you stayed home stay from school so you got that's that's what i associate that show with yeah. Right, yeah, I don't think of it in any other context, but like, oh no, that's the stay homesick from school. Right, yeah, I, I associate that show with feeling like shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, or like being unemployed or something like that. That's another good time to watch game shows. There were a lot of great Nickelodeon ones when I was growing up too. Okay, right um, you had uh, guts. the tep- yeah, guts. You had the Hidden Temple. Oh, Hidden Temple oh, was gosh, dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Double Dare. Double Dare. Um, didn't that guy hosts like a candy show now on like the yeah, he was the unwrapped guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, those shows were always really great. I always wonder how you get into being like a game show host. Like to me, it feels like they're separate from regular like actors and celebrities and stuff, but they're still like in this circuit. Like, yeah, like in when game shows were like popular, like, you know, in the seventies and eighties and even nineties or whatever, like these game show hosts were like, they would, that's all they were. Right. But now like, you know, they have these game shows that come out and it's always like, yeah, you get fucking somebody, Drew Carey yeah, in there. somebody that you know from something else. And it's like, I don't want to know this guy from anywhere else. I want this guy to just be like a smarmy game show host. Yeah. I just need my game master. Yeah. Do you know there's a, a whole thing that like almost all the game show hosts were um, like big right wing dudes. Oh really? Like Alex Trebek definitely is a, is a huge right wing guy. Okay. I don't know why that is. I read an article once that because um, it's all capitalism, well, baby. Yeah, it associated with with like because uh, the eighties were a big time for game shows. Right. A lot of the big game shows got really big then, and it was associated with kind of that eighties like uh, surging in love for capitalism, the Reaganomics. So I uh, I was doing some research today on game shows, and first of all, there's no game show host that doesn't have a sexual harassment scandal. <laughs> invo- in- what did I just say? All right, <laughs> right. Including Anne Robinson from uh, The Weakest Link. She also <laughs> was sexually harassing people. So she's actually like a real asshole. Um, so like her nickname was Queen of Mean. She was a former alcoholic. And she's possibly racist against the Welsh, which is like the most British thing on the fucking planet. <laughs> like most people don't think about the Welsh ever. And she like said on, on like record on like an interview or something like that. She's like, yeah, I just think they're annoying and loud. <laughs> it's like, dude, what? Is it like former alcoholic, like a success story? Yeah. Well, that's not that's not the part that I don't like about her. She also like uh, was really into fox hunting. Another super fucking British thing to do. You know, I, before you said fox hunting, I was like, she doesn't sound so bad. <laughs> uh, she uh, on her sexual harassment thing on air, she asked some like wine famous wine connoisseur if she if he'd like to feel her breasts. And she said she was a full bodied red, which nice. was very, oh I mean, you can't knock her for her creativity there. You have to have the confidence though. You know, you have to have like the self assurance to be able oh, to yeah. go out there and command a game show like weakest link. I mean, you I, know, in order to be mean to people, you have to like own it. Right. And I think that that's why there's so many sexual harassment scandals because they're like king shit among like right. the game show. C- like you've like, entered, crew. you've entered my game show <laughs> yeah. bubble nation and I'm like the king of this shit right here. Like, you know, <laughs> 
Everybody, um, I, I'm like the biggest fucking VIP around here. Everybody <laughs> kowtows to me. I'm sorry, how thick is your mic? Because mine is very thin. <laughs> thin and luxurious. Thin and long. So I was I was looking into uh, Wheel of Fortune, and I, I tried to find the Wikipedia page, and I got the disambiguation where it's like, uh, did you mean Wheel of Fortune like the occult symbol? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, it's a tarot card. And then I realized that Wheel of Fortune itself is like the game Hangman. You know, like you mm-hmm. you make a word and you get the spaces right. and you do the Hangman. So uh, I've I started to flip these into um, like kind of like a zodiac of. Uh, like occult symbols. So each like game show kind of has their own thing. So Wheel of Fortune has the Hangman and uh, the Wheel of Fortune, which is also right. A, yeah. So um, the Wheel of Fortune is like an ancient Babylonian mystic uh, concept for like fate. Like sometimes the fate goes up, sometimes it goes down. Um, but uh, so I gave them all taglines. Uh, so Wheel of Fortune is. Get ready to lay down your eternal soul for the exaltation of your utter domination by the hands of fate. It's Wheel of Fortune. And then I've got, um, for Price is Right, come worship at the altar of capitalism and test your knowledge of retail value. It's Price is Right. And then, let's see, newlywed game. Get ready to enforce the hegemonic structures of our sexually repressed society. It's the ma- It's the newlywed game. And then my favorite one is uh, uh, for Jeopardy. Uh, the Sisyphean torture of man's endless pursuit for knowledge, the unbreaking spiral of information, it's Jeopardy. And the reason why I think that it's so good and you know it has an eternal uh, vibe to it because Alex Trebek is 78. And, and he, he's, he still looks basically like the same as he always did. And he's still hosting. And he's going to host it until 2020. So he's going to be 80 years old <laughs> hosting trivia what's he gonna do i don't know he uh i was i was fucking i was watching it at the laundromat the other day and he was like oh uh because <laughs> it was like a tournament of champions type thing so people who had been on before he's like oh madison last time you were on there was a bit of a hubbub on the internet i heard that there was some real meme lords uh coming after you <laughs> and i was like i just couldn't imagine seeing alex trebek saying that on camera <laughs> Alex Trebek has to take a dump every once in a while and go into the, like, the bathroom and look at his phone and look at memes on, on the <laughs> toilet, too. <laughs> That's I mean, true. Right? That's true. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, so th- a lot of these people have ap- appeared in movies, too. Like, Bob Barker was in Happy Gilmore. Yep. And uh, Pat Sajak was in uh, Airplane 2. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. He was, uh, he was like, uh, supposed to be a weatherman for Buffalo, New York, or something like that. Was he drunk during the filming of that movie, too? Probably. <laughs> Was 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 Pat Sajak just like cheesing on the sauce all the time? I guess, yeah. I mean, like the, there was like a story about how he was like, yeah, I did like eight consecutive years of this show drunk, <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. He's like, I can't remember the last time I wasn't like blitzed while I was do, like hosting Wheel of Fortune. I just feel like being the other thing that I, I find that's interesting about uh, Wheel of Fortune is the selection process that they do for like the people. That was the thing that also got me into the occult. Uh, uh, angle for them was that they have like a bus or a van that goes around the com- country and like brings people in like talent scouting for people but it's like very culty like the wheel of fortune bus comes into town and selects who among you <laughs> shall come and and roll your dice um it also happens to also look like you know like an ice cream truck too yeah so like you know it brings yeah. all the people out and then they take one of them away and they get to... <laughs> it's like the fucking Hunger Games. They take a tri- tribute. Um, yeah, they don't tell you what happens to the people who lose on that show. I think that my favorite um, uh, game show is the Newlywed game. Just because people say making whoopee on it. And, like, I don't know. There's just something about the term making whoopee. Like, it's did, just so good. Did they, they? I think they created that term for that show, right? They, or, was, or was that like something people said? It was from a song. Said? Yeah, was it was, it? there was a song uh, by Eddie Cantor or something. Can- Cantor. Eddie Cantor from the 1920s. There's a song making Whoopi. But it's probably like, you know, like, my baby does the hanky panky. <laughs> right. Like, every song from the 20s was about fucking, but they just couldn't say fucking, yeah. d- dick or butt. That's what uh, the term rock and roll was meant to mean. Really? Yeah, rock yeah. and roll? Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah. that it was supposed to be kind of a way of slipping that in, like, rocking and rolling in the bed. Literally. <laughs> Literally slipping it in. Yeah. Well, the, there was, 
I think Did, there was a joke in Mallrats about the Whoopi thing. Really? Yeah, yeah. They w- there's a game show at the end of the movie. Okay. And it's clearly like like the newlywed game. Yeah, right? it's basically the just like a fake. It's the dating game. Oh, the dating, which right. is yeah. just the newlywed game, right? But it's diff- But it's basically the same format. But you're. It's one where like there's one person sitting in a chair. Yeah, oh, the, it's that, sim- very similar. Uh, format. That's the match game. The, right? Yeah. Um, it was like. Uh, isn't that right? That's like contestant number one. If I was a salad, yeah. what would what kind of dressing would you put on? And he's like, dicks, <laughs> dick dressing. Yeah, there's a, at the end of Mallrats, they have a f- like version of that game. Nice. And the guy's like, if we were, and she's like, if we were making Whoopi, <laughs> like wh- Whoopi, what the fuck is that? <laughs> um, <laughs> you mean like if we were fucking? <laughs> um, what was I gonna say? I I I always like to think of um the newlywed gain game is like horny memory game <laughs> where it's like i don't know they like ask questions where they're like if he was a salad what kind of dicks would i didn't i'm doing the same fucking joke but i just i can't get dicks and salads out of my head apparently and why should you <laughs> um, but yeah no there was like i like all of that stuff and I'm, i was you know watching it like as a kid but all that stuff like looking back is like all those game shows are like super sexually charged oh yeah you know, like, it, it, you ever watch Family Feud? With, oh, yeah, uh, the, with the original... Um, Richard Dawson yeah, was, uh, kissed was everybody. the host. And he, was, he would just grope people openly on that show. And, like, innuendo was... It wasn't even innuendo. It was just basically, like, you know, there's that, uh, hitting uh, on people. There's that creepy video of that uh, that Canadian game show host. Have you ever seen that? It's a game so. show for kids, and the guy's super creepy. <laughs> Just type in creepy game show host or don't actually don't don't do it. You'll it, it's really gross. Type yeah. in murder clown yeah. to Google. That's, he's yeah. it's he's got like he just always has these kids and then he's like he tricks them into letting him kiss them. It's so he's weird. like why don't you give Papa a kiss? It's like you're no, not my dad. It's like, I'm your dad like. now. Yeah. So the winner so wait, the winner of that game show is the one that doesn't get molested. Is that yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. That's the only real winner. Nice. The the ugly kids. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I just, like, I think that in life, I would like to be one of, like, three things. I want to be a game show host, I want to be a lounge singer, or I just want to be, like, a classic, like, snake oil huckster. So you basically want to live in, like, 1973. Hell yeah, dude. I think that I, I'm I'm born for it. Uh, for the listening audience at home, we've got a bobtail cat on the table. We do. Hi, Bobby. We're staring He's a little at each weird. Other. He's a little bitey. But He's as, a little long bitey as, right. long, as long as you only go for his head, he's fine. Yeah, but he gets very bitey. He used to live outside. It's not his fault. Yeah, he used to just hang out on the back porch when we were recording the podcast. So I had a cat once, um, and he was a dick. He was awful. He would like when he would he would bite your hand, and then when he sensed that like he was like getting you, yeah, he would clamp down harder. Okay. Every morning I would wake up, and I'd go to the bathroom, and I'd pass this couch like okay. in my living room. Yeah, and like. The couch was fine, but when I'd come out of the bathroom, he would have taken a dump on the couch <laughs> every morning of every day. Good morning. He was just a dick. <laughs> he attacked people. Oh god. I always think it's funny when cats like they like they are like silent assassins in your house and you just can't control the hands of fate when 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 they fucking come for you. Yeah, you don't want to let the relationship, you know, get contentious <laughs> between you and your cat. Okay, I think that just to finish round out this topic, let's make a, a game show because I was thinking about like the, the prizes that they give you on game shows and stuff like that. I think that we should make a game show that's based around something really arbitrary, like I don't know, like like tic tac toe or like thumb wrestling or something like I that. I think they've made a game show for everything. I mean, there yeah, was a tic tac toe game show called Tic Tac Doe. Oh my god! <laughs> and, like uh, like money, like cash god, money dough. I don't know if that was Chuck Woolery or <laughs> Wink Martindale. We'll be back in Tic Tac 2 and 2. <laughs> okay, how about... Is Go Fish a fucking game show? It is now. God damn, yeah, there we go. Okay, it's going to be say, it's gonna be Go Fish, but with a PH. Okay? Oh, nice. And if you win, you get to kiss every member of Fish on the lips. Okay? What do they get? They get... I think they get to not have the incriminating material I have on them released to the oh, public. Nice. And it's probably just that, like, they don't even jam, bro. It's all <laughs> it's all scripted. <laughs> They're just like super long compositions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. I'll I'll release the fucking sheet music that they they uh, they use every show. Oh, they don't want that secret so getting out. <laughs> they don't want that secret getting. They're they're, they're a jam band, okay? <laughs> okay, so that that'll be uh, go fish. 
P H I A I S H. What what would be the prize for that besides kissing? I mean, do you think that's enough? Do you think that's enough of a draw? I think that you'd get their tour bus to like drive you around town for like a week. Yeah, you get to go through. You get to go through three, uh, um, drive through menu. You right, know, yeah. drive through restaurants with it, and you get to kiss them. <laughs> I think I think you get to wear the drummer's dress at least once. Fishman's nice, yeah. John Fishman's dress. I think that's it, guys. I think coming coming to uh, to your TV screens this fall. Go fish. Go fish. <laughs> and on that note, we're moving on now to topic number 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 two 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 two. 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 It's me. Yes. So what do we want to talk about? I mean, we have a, we could basically talk about anything. Um, I've been thinking about like all of like the fictional technology stuff that you see in movies. Okay. And like, like it's technology that like you know it's like all hologram interfaces yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. But like it's so like advanced and they're so used to using it like that they get pissed off. Okay. Like you like. The, you know, like Robert Downey Jr. and Iron Man, <laughs> you know, like he's like surrounded by like hologram tech and yeah, he's like, like he's just like, uh, like chewing it off. Yeah, you know? just like, being fucking disrespectful to Jarvis yeah, the whole time. Yeah, basically like, you know, I'm, I'm tired of this window, like, and he just like takes his hand and throws it across the room. There's a great story from uh, the guy that did the, um, the graphics for the screens in Star Wars. Okay. Um, so he got hired by George Lucas to what all the displays would look like. And he said, eventually he realized, you know, with this level of technology, it'd probably just be photorealistic. <laughs> and then he just realized, he's like, I wrote up a thing. I was going to tell George Lucas. And then I realized I was explaining my way out of a job. So I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like one of those things where you have like that retro futurism where it's like, instead of ha- like, they don't really predict the paradigm shifts. Like instead of having like a smaller computer like we do nowadays where it's a computer that fits in your pocket. It's just a really fucking big like computer. In war, like in war games, like, yeah. you know, he goes into this room and the, the computer, the Joshua computer or whatever is like the size of like an entire, you know, <laughs> warehouse basement. Yeah. And they're like, this is better. In hackers. <laughs> what was the, what was the deal in hackers? In hackers, you hack computers by going onto like a big screen and like you're going around like a 3D <laughs> maze. Oh, like, sweet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's like a digital minotaur in there. Yeah. And, and, uh, Pendulette is apparently the security guy. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a greatly bad movie. That's amazing. Very, very happy about their, uh, 14.4 like megabits <laughs> modem in that movie. Um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of old movies like that. The game, Fallout games are kind of based on yeah. taking that principle. Just uh, what if we took like 1950s vision of what the future was like and just had the future be like that, right. and then blew it all up? But putting yeah. that aside, yeah, like the floating cars look like 1950s cars and yeah. shit. It, it, the futurism stuff back then was so wrong. <laughs> it's great. I mean, we don't have hover cars. I don't think we'll ever have hover cars. They're gonna have Uber flying Ubers though. Are they? I guess. I mean, oh, wow. this, this is in the news like this week, but uh, I mean, I don't know how that's going to work. I mean, like an Uber can take you from, you know, the bar back to your house. But if it's a flying Uber, like where is it going to land? You know, <laughs> how is it going to pick you up? Dude, like, you just got to parachute out. No, that's we're just why everybody's fly. playing fucking uh, PUBG and Fortnite now in days. You're training for your parachute landings. <laughs> You got to get to the launch pad, yeah. right? Yep. To get your ride. Yep. And then it drops you off at this other launch pad. Which that is you gotta 30 get miles a, from you. Yeah. You, you got you to ride from the launch pad home. So that's going to be how that works. But you Star, get, Star Wars had uh, touch screens and tablets. Or sorry, Star Trek had touch screens and tablets. Star Trek, I think, is the one that actually got a lot of the shit right. Because the communicator was what Nokia based the original cell phone on. And yeah, so Star, it, Star Trek was hard sci-fi. So it was a little different. I mean, yeah. Aside from that weird lizard fight. But you mean yeah. that really are, are, are like romantic and like sexy? If, if you play fight? it at four times speed, it is a it's a very compelling fight. Hell yeah! <laughs> um, there's a lot of stuff like that in those old movies, and then there's like the Flash Gordon and Star Wars kind of stuff that doesn't really make any sense whatsoever. Yeah. Um, what was I gonna say? I just think that like some of sometimes like the way that they perceive where technology is gonna go is just hilarious. Like in um, a Brave New World. Uh, in, in that book, they, they just have helicopters that bring you everywhere. It's just everybody has a helicopter, and it's just that's just what they did. 
and like that was supposed to be like the height of technology. They're like, wow, could you imagine a helicopter comes picks you up, <laughs> driven by a fucking like eugenically like deficient clone? <laughs> like that's but, not the the future. We're really we're probably just get computers to do. They're that. all on the drug though, right? So yeah. like even the helicopter pilots are on the drug. Oh they're yeah, everybody's just fucking faded. Drug. Like yeah. yeah, it's like a fucking rap music video. Yeah. Star Trek also had um they did they actually eventually had the explanation for why there's not TVs and stuff. Why is that? Uh, there, there's uh, at least one episode of Next Generation where they're like, "Yeah, this is what people used to waste a lot of time doing, like sitting around looking at screens. <laughs> like that's why we don't have them anymore." Wow, <laughs> it's like, oh, good point. Let me shut this off and <laughs> go outside. Wow, just fucking really coming down on the millennials from the seventies. <laughs> yeah, they they were able to predict cell yeah. phones and millennials <laughs> back then. <laughs> Yeah, I think that like I don't know, retro futurism is 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 a lot of fun though. Like, I mean, I I think I don't know, steampunk sometimes gets a little weird and nerdy, but it's it's like it's cool. Like like uh, Neuromancer is a good book. Like, yeah, I mean, anything people want to do that they like, you know, is fine. There's just you know, people people will never stop talking about like <laughs> you know how weird they think things are. But if you if you like it, who cares? I didn't see the new Blade Runner movie, but I heard that it did a good job of taking. Blade Runner's wrong predictions and yeah. still carrying them forward in a way that felt natural. Yeah. That like, movie... all right, Blade Runner got a lot of this stuff, weird stuff wrong, and that's not what the 2000s are going to look like, right. but let's pretend it did and keep going forward. Right, exactly. Yeah, it's funny when I think Blade Runner was set in like 2011 or something like that. I think that's when it was set or something. And it's just like fucking crazy neo tokyo like fucking uh is, los angeles is there a movie that depicts like a like a sunny like desirable future i don't know the worst defender for shittiness is definitely back to the future too though okay Why for that? just this is not at all close right yeah. <laughs> just this is so far off well that's like there's different levels of like sci-fi as far as like the ways that they produce like predict the future like the original sci-fi was very like gadget based. Like, what if there was a ray gun? What if your car could fly? You know, what <laughs> what if your wife would just listen to you? <laughs> um, and then, like after that, they became like um, more like allegorical and like sociological. So, like nowadays, like like the movie uh, Her is a good example of that, where it's like it's not really about the technology; it's more about what the technology would do, do. to society. Yeah. Well, the very early stuff was more pulpy. It right, was exactly. like the weird tales kind of right. stuff. And so it was very like just it was uh more fantasy based. Yeah. Then they started getting into the hard sci fi with a little bit of like the technology. Right. And here's if we had this device, what would it look like? Right. And then people started get really getting into the okay, well then what would the social implications of that could be? And that's kind of the golden age of uh of sci fi. Oh yeah. And now there's like shows like like Black Mirror where it's just like every episode they're just like, What if your smartphone could fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> what if your smartphone saw you jerking off? What if your salad had dicks in it? <laughs> Man, that show is like you you turn on an episode and you have no idea if it's gonna be like one of those that like energize you yeah. while you're watching yep. it or like you will not just want to you will fucking, not sleep. Yeah. You just want to jump off a cliff. That one with the robot dog, man. Oh yeah, that was good. I could, yeah, because I, I, that's totally something that can happen. Oh yeah, yeah. Just I think the whole I mean, then you go online and you see like, oh, there's Boston a Boston Dynamics. Dog, yeah, you know? it's like, oh shit, oh my god, just put some knives and guns on that thing. Yeah, we just already fucking have it. <laughs> yeah, I like. Um, that's what Black Mirror is really good at. It gives you an idea of if this technology existed, right? Like, what are the kind of things that would right. happen? The um, I love the one with uh. The one where you can um, look back at your memories. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. totally realistic to what would happen. That's like a perfect I heard they're episode. optioning that for like a movie now. Yeah. Like Robert Downey Jr. bought yeah. it to make a movie out of it. I, I mean, feel like I already saw the story. I don't know why I need to see a movie that does well, the same story. They've, but used, okay. they've used that concept a couple times in the show. So I think yeah, what they're I trying to do is. Yeah, like, back with uh, John Hamm. Yeah, exactly. The John Hamm. I haven't watched the newest season, though. Um, they, they're kind of like building that out. I think that they're trying to like make a, make a more unified universe with uh, Black Mirror. But yeah, I mean, the way that they definitely have a pretty like negative look at, at, at technology. Like there's not like you were saying, there's not many utopian versions of technology. It's not like someone fucking invents digital ice cream and then everyone's just eating ice cream. Yeah, it's nobody, like people are they, killing they, each other for Star ice cream. Star Trek they did. Did they? Yeah, you make all the food, you just ask for it and it like it creates it. 
But they still have war and shit in Star Trek. Nobody's getting along. Not really. Yeah. No, no, Star Trek is supposed to be that there is a federation. Mm-hmm. And then the prime directive is you, if you come across life while you're out there looking around, mm-hmm. you don't fuck with it. Okay. Until it reaches a certain point. Right. And then you then see you can if they want to be part of the international okay. or the intergalactic community. And if they don't, you leave them alone. Okay. I think is basically the rules of it. I know I'm going to get like, we're going to get emails from like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, mm, no, that it really is. Well, actually. <laughs> Uh, Picard's coming back. They're uh, doing a new Picard show. Oh, really? Yeah, That's yeah. cool. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, but my wife and her mom are big Star Trek fans, so I, I get to hear about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, do you guys think that like maybe there's you know there's like aliens out there and they're just watching us and they're like, once they get Twitter too. That's why we need the Space <laughs> Force, man. Space, space, Force, space Force, dude. <laughs> Space Force. Once we get out there, we're gonna be punching people in space. Can you imagine how cool that'll look? Lasers, man. <laughs> it's all about lasers <laughs> in space. I mean, they did actually. They started. I mean, the 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 army has a fucking railgun now that they have mounted on ships and shit. Right. And they have now like a high uh, intensity laser, and they're never gonna fucking use it, but it's cool. <laughs> Do you remember the movie Real Genius? Do you ever see that? You know, it sounds familiar, but I, I don't know if I. Um... So like these like really Val Kilmer's in it. It's okay. Like the height of like wacky Val Kilmer. Yeah. You know. <laughs> And uh, the bunch of like super smart kids at this college, and like they're trying to build a laser, and like they build, they finally build it, and like the professor takes it away and like gives it to the government to like, <laughs> I don't know, put into space and just like vaporize people from yeah, space. Yeah, just or shoot whatever. Russians or whatever. And they like they they divert the beam to like, you know, go into like the professor's house and like make like enough popcorn to like ruin his house or something. <laughs> That's the end of the movie. And then wow, like, what everybody if, wants to rule the world. It's a great movie, though. It sounds like a pretty good ending. I mean, instead of fucking killing the professor, they just popcorn his house. They mentioned, like, very casually early in the movie that he hates popcorn, too. So, uh, well, How do they get all the popcorn in there? That was, like, they never explained that because, like, there's so much popcorn. It's, like, the real feat here is, like, attaining that much popcorn. What if they're really just, like, discovering a dark secret from his wife where it's just, like, she fucking loves popcorn and the whole basement <laughs> is fucking popcorn and they just heat it up a little bit and just like, God damn it, Deborah. <laughs> I think her name was Deborah. <laughs> See, that means it's true. There you go. That's that's definitely true now. I just like the idea of, like, people not predicting, like, paradigm shifts, like, things that don't, like, rather than solving this problem entirely, just make it bigger and faster. It's like, instead of having, like, a pistol that shoots, I don't know, a different kind of bullet, like a laser pistol or something like that, it's like, let's just make a really big pistol that makes, shoots big bullets. Right. <laughs> Like, like the ones from Super Mario, like the ones with faces. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like the fucking bullet bill right. is going to be the, the future. There was this, another retro futuristic movie from the 80s um, it's called Runaway. Okay. Um, Tom Selleck was like the, the, the cop hero of the movie and Kirstie Alley was in it. And the villain was Gene Simmons. And um, they had bullets that were like tracker bullets, like basically like <laughs> a bullet with your name on it you know and like hell it, yeah like it would get shot and like the camera was the bullet at this point it would fly all over the place and you'd see like how the bullet would like eventually get to the person and kill them <laughs> um and then they at the end also they had like these robot like spiders that would like w- were programmed to like jump on you and shoot like hydrochloric acid into your body the fucking sci-fi's obsession with acid is hilarious. Acid does not do that shit. I mean, it does, but over the course of like a day, you can dissolve some stuff. It in seems it. impractical. I mean, like, there's lots of ways to harm a person without having to use acid. I guess. Yeah, just know? fucking blow them apart with bullets. Um, was I gonna say? Fucking. It, that's funny because that's not too far off of like original. Like, like in World War II, they trained pigeons to direct missiles. They, they would basically have some kind of, like, lens in front of them, and they would teach them to pack, like, different directions, and that would, like, steer the missile in midair. So they just have fucking, <laughs> fucking pigeon missiles. They stopped doing it because they were like, oh, this is inhumane. It's like, guys, you are you realize what these missiles do, right? But, but like, you're not going to... Can't kill the birds. No, <laughs> definitely not. But, yeah, I, I, just, I don't know. Retrofuturism is just funny. It's funny to think about... Like I, I, you see like images on the online all the time where it's like, 
what they used to think. And it was like, you know, people on hoverboards, people flying cars through space. And it's like what we have in 2018. It's like somebody doing a meme video where they're fucking like putting pasta on their head or something like that. Yeah. Back to the future too. Um, it, like the, the hoverboard idea, right? Like people like really like attached oh, yeah. to that specific yeah. thing. Like everybody, like even to this day, you know, like a hoverboard is the ultimate mm -hmm. dream of like fictional movie tech, I think like, and we, I don't see how that's ever. Gonna well, be a that's thing. because the previous ultimate dream of virtual reality porn is already here. <laughs> right. Yeah. Hell yeah. No, I mean, it's one of those things where like, they don't, I mean, if you think about like how a hoverboard would actually work, what you really want is a, a skateboard. Right. Because a hoverboard <laughs> would not go straight in the direction you push it. It would just go, it's frictionless, so it would just go in any direction. The, the dumbest thing to me about the hoverboard from the movie was like he was like kicking with his foot to propel himself forward on air, like on yeah, nothing. I exactly. Like, I'm not sure that I get how this is working, but whatever, it's a movie and who cares. But then he had self tying people wanted shoes, the hoverboard so, so much, yeah. you know, and I think people still do. They made like a small hoverboard recently. It was like a magnetic hoverboard, and like I, I don't forget who they had. Like Tony Hawk or somebody used it, and he's just like, "Yeah, this shit sucks. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's really hard to control. It's like, wow. It's, it's maybe like, it's because it doesn't have any fucking friction. Can we put wheels under <laughs> this and like I could just use it like a skateboard? Yeah, dude. Just keep everything the same. Put wheels under it. Turn off the magnet. Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that. Um, if we were to have like a, a a retro future, I think what we need to do we need we need Twitter too, where it's just Twitter, but it flies around your face like Jarvis, and then we have uh, <laughs> you gotta have the 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 new vape, the vape that it's like it's it's uh, it comes with a big tank of nitrogen you put on your hip uh -huh. to super cool it so it's super smooth. See, I like vape pills, right? Like vape you, pills. you swallow the pill, <laughs> and, then, and then like for like a half hour you could just blow vape. <laughs> Like, you know, from, like, it's just like, you know, like popping and locking inside your stomach and like you just, you know, start shooting vapor out of like all your, you know, it's like, orifices. It's like neckbeard Jetsons. Like, <laughs> like they have the fucking, the food pills, but it's just vape right. smoke. Yeah. yeah, vape pills. It's like, yo, I want to blow some good O's, man. Like, let's fucking, let's crank up the O's ohms. <laughs> all right. Uh, do you want to do the, the segue? What's the segue? The Last topic of the night. Oh, yeah. Okay. Here topic we go. number three. This is the last topic of the night. For those of you who don't know, Joe does that for his uh, trivia. He does a delay uh, effect on his voice for the last topic. I like to of hold it off. I didn't realize this was stolen. Yeah, dude. I like this whole <laughs> podcast is illegitimate. <laughs> It's fine. I, I, you know, it's it's okay. I, I I didn't invent like you know echo effect or anything like that. So it's, I think everybody everybody gets the knob on their on their board and they can use it. It's fine. Um, yeah, I like to try to hold off um, using that effect in, as late in the night as possible. Yeah. Because like people who don't know or who yeah, they like, get freaked there out for the first time, they're just like, "What the fuck?" All right. So my topic is: Do you think that we are experiencing a um, a counter revolution against uh, everything being online and on phones and everything. Do you think people are starting to like a snapback? Yeah, like a snapback. Like people are starting to revalue um, human interaction because they're getting they're getting don't disillusioned they sell, with don't online. Don't they sell like phones that are like that don't have a screen and they're just like the shape of a phone, but it's just like basically like holding like a piece of plastic that oh is yeah like, yeah it's they, like a dummy thing right like so that, no yeah. phone I think they're called right, yeah. yeah so you can you have the satisfaction of holding your phone or having a phone in your pocket, but it doesn't do anything. It's just like a piece <laughs> of like brick or whatever. It seemed to me like there was like a ten year period where nobody really wanted to do anything. Yeah. Like everybody was like, they didn't want to go out and like get together and do things. Yeah. People only wanted to do things online. At least people I knew. They were very <laughs> boring people. Um, but lately I've noticed that people are starting to go in the other direction, almost like as a, a snapback or like um, a, uh, like a, a counter balance to yeah. the way it was before. The biggest thing I've noticed is within a, a lot of people I know have moved from playing a lot of video games and starting to play a lot of board games. Oh, yeah. Board games yeah. are suddenly super popular again. Yeah, and super expensive now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, I have a shitload of board games, and I play an, an obscene amount of Dungeons & Dragons. But <laughs> the um, that I think that that is a... Uh, I don't think that's a coincidence. I think that's people starting to be like get dis like bored. 
yeah with um for sure with being connected i mean i definitely like on a nightly basis i'll be like on instagram or twitter or something like that. i'm just like i don't even know why the fuck i'm doing this right now like i don't even want to you just like burn out that like that serotonin reserve like it's just over after that or rather dopamine or whatever yeah I think that there's a snapback already on social media enough where, like, you know, I'm, the people aren't, like, abandoning social media, but yeah. I think, like, you know, it's been used and overused and abused, like, for so long yeah. that, like, you know, the only thing left to do is to not use it as much anymore. Right? I think when, like, everybody's grandmother got on Facebook, it was right, like, yeah, oh, maybe this isn't fucking over, dude. cool anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Facebook is 100% over. Like, it's, this is the, the last days. It's time to jump ship on Facebook. I mean... It's going to still exist, but, like, who who even posts on Facebook? Like, I, I post on Facebook, like, I used to do it all the time. I fucking post, like, once every, I'm like, three months I'm just to argue with people now. about politics. Yeah, oh, that's <laughs> just healthy stuff like that. Yeah, that's about it. I, I literally use it for that and scheduling Dungeons and Dragons games. <laughs> that's the only two things I use Facebook for. Um, what was I going to say? Well, that brings us back to, like, Black Mirror. Like, did you see the, the episode? It might have been from the most recent season yeah, where, where they, like... One. They were like rating everybody on the phone. Oh no, I did see that. Episode. I think that might have yeah. been the second season instead. Yeah. But yeah, I think that that's one of those things where it's like there. I mean, social media definitely can become a hellscape. Like you know, I mean, look at the f- political system we're in right now, mm. where fucking memes are a real thing that they need to fucking discuss on the news and not just pictures of cats, which <laughs> they should be. Um, yeah, I've been spending time with my real cats instead <laughs> of looking at pictures of cats. All exactly. <laughs> It was funny, the, the, a couple of weeks ago, we were at the poorhouse, and uh, the manager there, Aunt Aaron, has like a little chihuahua, and <laughs> I, I was, we were sitting outside, and Chris went in, he came back with pictures of the chihuahua, and then Olivia went in, she came in back with pictures of the chihuahua, and then Nick went in and came back with pictures of the chihuahua. I was like, you guys are just doing it for the fucking memes, you don't even care about this dog. <laughs> um, I think there's definitely been a shift also to like old timey things, like old timey hobbies and stuff like that. Like people in Brooklyn fucking pickling everything and like that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's just hipsters. <laughs> yeah, but hipsters, hipsters are the they're the retro futurists, man. They're 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 the steampunkers of the new generation. Bring back owning chickens in the urban landscape. <laughs> can't Bring own, it back. You can't own a chicken in Albany. There's a law against that. I know that because my bio teacher made a song for it and played it on his guitar during my bio class once. Oh God. Uh-oh. We got this two cats on the table, y'all. So we uh, we cut out there. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> uh, when the cats were on the table, they uh, it's not great for a recording environment. Yeah, the cat, I think, ran like across like the computer and must have like stepped on something. Yeah, thankfully, we only lost like 30 seconds. See, this is if we were just having this conversation in real life. It wouldn't fucking matter. Not on a computer. Wouldn't have mattered. Exactly. The thing was, I think we we struck like you know, like the most important like topic <laughs> ever. Like in that thirty seconds, we can't remember what it was. Oh yep. man, we solved it. We really got to the bottom of it. But yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, I don't know. I mean, so what do you do, Joe? That that uh, that is offline. Like, are you a very online person most trivia. of the time? Or no? <laughs> I yeah, work. trivia. No, I yeah. work. Yeah, um, work. I mean, trivia is a. Uh, offline event people get together oh absolutely it's good to be a part of something that does bring people out um instead of you know having people stay home you know look at screens yeah think about how many incels you've prevented exactly (laughs) you say you're saving the fucking world man Man, i mean now i feel like a real hero Um, (laughs) getting people together man i like to think of myself as a high five generator actually (laughs) generator Like I ask you, the best feeling though, seriously, the best feeling of trivia when I is when I ask a question, and like there's like a little pause, right? Yes, and yes. everybody's like, you know, in their clutches, like doing like you know trying to figure it out, and then somebody gets it, and then there's a high five. Oh yeah, like I I try to count how many high fives I gen- I've, I've ever you know <laughs> generated in my life. I'm like upwards of like you know maybe like four or five hundred probably. You're doing the Lord's work, man. You're bringing people together. You're fighting. The technocracy. It's like 500 times five. Can't <laughs> high five online. You can't high five online. Mm-hmm. You can't hug a child with nuclear arms. <laughs> <laughs> that was from like Daria or something like that. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I wish the one problem that I have, because I don't really drink, like I wish that there was a better like public house than the pubs. Like, you know, like like bars and stuff are great, but like. They're loud. <laughs> and, right, yeah. And, and also, to, like, you know, like, the only thing to really do other than, like, you know, have conversations with people is, like... Drink. Drink, yeah. yeah. So, like, 
I mean, I've heard of places like that are going to be opening soon that are like, you know, juice bars or something like that. I mean, coffee houses like yeah. serve that function. Yeah. You know? You're but, not allowed to be loud at a coffee house. Right. though. You can't make real jokes. Everyone starts looking at you. There's there's I think that there is a perfect, you know, balance in some capacity. I don't know what it is where it's like you don't have to like drink and get drunk. Yeah. And you don't have to like whisper like you're in the library. There's there's something out there that yeah, somebody's gonna figure out that you can go and your house. Yeah, I think <laughs> it's your house. Yeah, I uh, you have people I mean, come over to your house, right? And then yeah, I mean one of the play board so games. one of the places would be uh, game stores. You know, a lot of people yeah. get together at game oh, stores yeah, for, for sure. games, but the clientele <laughs> that a lot of them attract is sometimes a little difficult to want to hang out around. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Because you basically have uh, the insult crowd there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Um, so that sometimes is a little difficult. Yeah, I mean, I think that it, there like atmosphere and like who goes to a place can really change the way that you interact with people. But sometimes it's in a surprising and like good way. Like sometimes I'll go to like concerts and stuff where I'm like, well, I kind of know what these fans are like. But then you go there and people are super nice and it's cool. Right. But like, it, there's something I don't know. There is like some kind of mystical like formula that you can put together and actually get into that groove of like actually having solid conversations with people having like a good time but it's very hard to do that online <laughs> i had a lot more of that when i was in college yeah too, just, you know? just it was like i could just go to like parts of the school where people hung out and like there would be people there oh yeah asking you to sign things maybe but still <laughs> people there even going back to the game store thing like um, so I DM for a D and D group that is mostly women. Okay, they don't want to go to the game store and hang out because they're going to get harassed by weirdos well, the whole what, time. I, I, why would they not want to go there? Yeah, in fact, <laughs> I think every every all of them have been on this podcast. Yeah, Lena, yep. Kaylee, my wife. Yep. I mean, I just feel like it's one of those things where, like, sometimes you walk into an area and you're like, "Oh, this isn't where I belong." <laughs> Getting some looks. And sometimes it's it's in a, it's in a place full of uh, comic book nerds. Yeah, I feel like that when I walk into like a bro bar. Yeah, I'm like, oh no, I yeah. don't belong here. 180, turn around. Yeah, cool. Well, I was in Montreal. This is why literally I go to one bar and it's the Porter House. Yeah. <laughs> well, the Porter House, I feel like, I is a very to. solid environment for like you can kind of be any age in there. I mean, I think it's, it's like definitely not a college bar, but like I think that you can be you can be young and hang out. You can be older and hang out. You can have a dog and hang out, and everybody loves you. Um, I was in Montreal last weekend at Oceaga and like, that's like definitely, uh, a little bit more, uh, pretty people than, <laughs> than I am or I have any <laughs> right to be around. And so like, I was like walking around, like, you know, I know how I look. I've got like a scruffy face and like, I was fucking wearing like a shitty hat. Like I wasn't fucking dressing up. It's a music festival. I'm just trying to fucking watch music and be in the sun and, you know, just not get dehydrated. And like people are walking around with like these fucking like, you know, flat brimmed fashion hats on like looking like Pharrell Williams and stuff like that. And I don't know. It's just one of the things where you walk around and you're like, what's up, dude? Like, I hope we have something in common. <laughs> it's weird that you like the same band that I like, but cool. Yeah. I don't, that's one of the reasons I don't like festivals. I never go to festivals anymore. Yeah. I saw two people with like the, like I said, like the flat brimmed like fashion hats on and you know, they were, they were both wearing black hats and I, I started laughing out loud. I was by myself. I literally was in the bathroom. And I just, because I had the thought immediately in my head, and it was, there's a new sheriff in town. <laughs> <laughs> and as they were going by, I just said, howdy, partner. And they didn't hear me because they probably spoke French. But <laughs> it was it was a good joke for me. And it was nice to be in a place where I, was, I didn't belong. <laughs> I don't even like going to shows as much anymore because yeah. I'm much more sensitive to how much of dickhead shows make people for some reason. Yeah, it's a tense environment. I don't really understand why. I mean, obviously, alcohol is a big factor. Is it like the I spend a lot of money and a lot of effort getting here, and yeah. I need to have the experience that makes it worth it? Yeah, yeah. I gotta have and the best you, time. And, and if you're in my way, like it, it gets contentious pretty quickly. Is why does every six eight guy need to stand at the front of the venue, <laughs> for example? Because he's got to show all the girls how good he is at punch dancing. <laughs> he does. No, he doesn't. He's tall. He's gonna get all the pussy in the world already. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. That's how it works. Is that how it works? <laughs> it's. It's pretty accurate. That's a thing. I like. I missed out on the whole like dating app thing because me and my girlfriend got together before that happened. And continued to stay together, right. and like the, like the whole like I'm six one. Like that. Like I never knew that that was such a thing. I mean, oh I, yeah, one of my favorite like meme things I've ever seen online was some dude 
um, went on a dating app, and every time a woman asked how tall he was, he asked what her cup size was. <laughs> and, Jesus. and then when she was offended, he was like, why does it matter how tall I am? As a slightly below average height American. Yeah. And I know if Chris was here, he would he would feel yeah. my pain. It's, you, you hit it's on something bad. there for a second, though. Like I, So I've been together with my wife now for like 11 years, mm-hmm. right? Um, I mean, we weren't married that long, but like that's how that's when we first got together. Yeah. And in that time since, like the rise of like dating apps mm-hmm. and like you know hookup apps and all that other stuff, and like even like social media, um, like breaking up with somebody, like in like social media, how that like tears apart. Oh like, yeah, you know for like, sure. Friends, and like, you see like you know if you're all broken up about it, and like you see them posting pictures you with other people. Posts, what are they doing? And, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I never had to experience like a second of that. I've never had to do that either. Yeah. And, like, I can't imagine, like, you know, like, what that is for people. I mean, it must be, like, the worst thing ever. Well, it's like the whole world is, is is like, starting, like, learning to ride a bike, basically, with all this new technology, especially the social media apps. Like, I mean, you have this, I think I've said this before, but you have fucking senators making the same mistakes that, like, 15-year-olds make. It's right, like, yeah. like, don't send a dick pic. Just <laughs> don't. One, nobody gives a shit what your dick looks like. <laughs> and two, like, th- it doesn't go away. <laughs> I mean, it's almost as bad of, like, sending a picture of your dick as not understanding how to use the technology, you know? (laughs) Like, you're you're publicly not, you don't know how to use this, obviously. Yeah, exactly. One thing that, um, one thing that I never, since I never did the, I never did the online dating, I never had to do any of that. One of the things that, um, was one of the first things that made me feel old is when I was talking to somebody who was younger than me, and they're like, oh, I'm just trying to, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, like, how to meet girls, and I'm like, well, you could just partake in activities where other human <laughs> beings are at. Like, I was like, why don't you go volunteer somewhere? You'll meet nice people if you go volunteer somewhere. He was like, what? I'm like, yeah, you go and you do a thing. No. There'll be other people and you meet them. And he was like, no, I mean like a website. You got a website I can go to? I'm like, oh, I don't know. no, sorry, yeah, dude. Farmersonly.com, <laughs> yeah. dude. Go volunteer on someone's farm. Yeah. I, I, the I, idea at that time of, because it was like eight, nine years ago, yeah. of like going out and you go to a place where you can meet people. Probably not a bar. Not always the best right, place yeah. to, to meet women. But, yeah. it, you know, it was, like, foreign. I mean, it, it's just one of those things where people, they they just want everything to be a game or an app. And I don't want to sound like a fucking, like, baby boomer style where it's like, these kids don't know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. But it's like, you know, I think that everyone in our generation and of a certain, you know, inside this tech- technological age that we're living in right now, you know, understands that there is a limit to how good it is. Like, you know, it's great that you can order Domino's, but it also, you know, you get out it's of practice. It's great that you can order Domino's. It is great. Shut up. No, no, Domino's, you can see they got the pizza Domino's tracker. Domino's is unacceptable. That app is that app is dope. <laughs> Living in New York and ordering Domino's is unforgivable. Well, I agree with that. But when you're in when you're in a foreign city where they got was no the, good was pizza, was the was the pizza? Hut, well, I think it might have been Pizza Hut. Was remember like recently, like they had like shoes or something like you could press a button on yeah, your shoe. Yeah. Yep. You, yeah, they pre- had, they you had, press a button on your shoe, and then it, it orders it, a pizza. It delivers the pizza to wherever that device <laughs> is. So like you can walk around, like you press the button on your shoe, and then walk like six blocks, but they'll always know where you are because you're still wearing the pizza shoes. Well, that's like there's as far as like tracking goes. I mean, like I went on a trip to England not too long ago, and um, like it's really nice that I can look back at my Google Maps and see exactly where I went, you know, throughout the whole trip. But it's kind of weird that Google Maps has a right, yeah. history of everywhere I've ever been <laughs> since I've had a fucking smartphone. Like, it's just weird, you know, but you get used to it, I guess. I don't know. It's one of those things where, like, people, I think that people, you can install, like, um, like, like a thing that, you know, you can track other people's phones, like, figure out where they are. Like, it's a voluntary thing, or, like, maybe parents do it for kids or whatever. But, like, it's just very weird that, like, there's so many different ways that things have changed. Like, you know, w- even when I was just a kid, like, you know, fucking if you said you're going to be somewhere, you just met there at the time. You didn't text each other or anything like that. You just were there, you know, or you called someone on the phone. It's like, hey, I'm leaving now. I'll see you soon. Or if you, like, go to the place, right, and, like, they don't, they're not there, and then you, like, go to a payphone and call their yeah. house. Yeah, exactly. And, like, they don't answer. You're like, well... Like they're either gonna be here or they're not. I guess you know <laughs> they're either dead or they're on their way, right. <laughs> and we'll find out after this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I I think that, you know, I don't know. I think that getting together is definitely key. I think that like shows are a lot of fun, but also at the same time, like watching the show sometimes is not the fun part. It's the 
being around people and having weird interactions like outside the bar or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 mean, I enjoy I, that stuff. Yeah, I think it's I mean, funny. It's fun to play. I like playing shows with my band, but yeah, I'm um, going to big shows. Like, well, I'm just. Well, it's, I never want to go to the Time Union again. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that's the worst place in the world. I mean, uh, some, aside from Upstate Concert Hall, I like Upstate Concert Hall. It, like they let in way too many 15 year olds, but you know, it, it's just one of those things where you know, it, it's the only medium sized venue we have in the area. For that, for my, for that place, like it, for me, it like depends on the show. Yeah, you know what just kind of sounds show it is. terrible in there. Yeah, it's, it's got, got a really bad sound. sound. Yeah, I mean you gotta you gotta you know you gotta go to to uh, a show like uh, like Connor Oberst, and then you'd be around the hipsters. You know, if you go to like fucking like I went to see Excision there, which is like a dubstep guy, and it was just a bunch of fifteen year olds on Molly. It was weird. Oh, one of my favorite things that has ever happened in my life was I was taking a music course in uh, at U Albany for an elective. And I'm, we're waiting for the professor to show up, and there's this, there's these two kids, and one kid's talking about this amazing dubstep song, and how the bass drop <laughs> in the song is the greatest bass drop he's ever heard. So he starts playing the song on his phone, <laughs> and he's playing it like really loud on the phone, and I'm like, this is not going to sound good. <laughs> the bass drop is not going to sound good on his phone. <laughs> so I'm just waiting and watching, and he's like, all right, here it comes, here it comes, and it just sounds like. Like it was just like it was like the it just sounded like nothing, and he's like, "Yeah," and the other kid, I think, like didn't want to be a dick, so he was like, "Yeah, man, that That's, was a sick bass yeah. drop, sickest bass drop, nice. and dropped out all your, the way out yeah, of the phone, out of your centimeter size speaker. That was really, really something." Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm just glad that I get to get together with you guys every Tuesday and sometimes on the weekend and have these interactions, and have these conversations, you know. I feel like a big time podcaster. It's like, you know, the only time I get to sit down and talk to my friends is when we have microphones in front of us, you know? <laughs> and I just, I'm not going to let the fame change me, you know? You know, we've got that Audible sponsorship. We've never gotten a dime from them, but, you know, they're there. I mean, it's Jeff Bezos, you know? <laughs> one day, I mean, you're going to have, like, you know, one episode that, like, people are just going to, like, lose their minds about. Mm hmm. And they're gonna check out like you know the back catalog, mm -hmm. and they're gonna and say, why, "Why is that guy peeing in sinks? And What's that all gonna, about?" Then all of a sudden you're gonna get like eight dollars from eight. Audible, and you're gonna be like, "Holy shit! Holy it was shit! All dude. worth it. It was all worth it. The the collective three hours of plugging that we've gonna, done for them. It's gonna turn out that all the shit we threw at them. It's gonna turn out like Chris was looking at the wrong page <laughs> for like the track, and yeah, there's really like nine thousand dollars <laughs> waiting for us in there." <laughs> or like you're, you're like you're giving your money to some other podcast, like because yeah. you know, like you have the wrong link, like yeah. yeah, like right now, Pod Save America is just getting all this <laughs> Audible money, and like what the hell? It's like a lot of people in Albany, New York, seem to seem to be using our <laughs> promo code. It's weird. They're all listening to cooking books on tape. What the fuck? <laughs> all right, guys, if you're still listening, thank you for listening. Uh, thank you, Joe, for coming on. Thank you for having me. Uh, once again, Joe does trivia Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, Tuesdays in Schenectady at Bombers, Wednesdays at Troy at the Franklin, Franklin Alley's, Alley's yeah, underneath the Tack House, and Thursdays at the Madison Poor House at 7 p.m. Be there or be square. If you ever think that you want to do trivia, Joe's trivia is the shit, I promise you. It's, it's, it's one of the kind. I love it. I love games and I love puzzles and I want to be a game show host and I want to fucking fall into a retro techno it, future man. where the, where the game show hosts, everyone's a game show. I'm host. really surprised we didn't talk about Steve Harvey during that segment, by the way. I already did Steve Harvey. Yeah, I figured I've already played already Steve, Harvey, Steve Harvey and I've also heard some questionable stuff about Steve. Harvey, <laughs> <laughs> So I didn't want to really be bare my soul on that. But yes. Uh, so Joe, do you want to take us out? Uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for joining us, this, joining us this week. Don't forget to tune in next time. Until then, folks, please help remember to control the prison population. Do not get arrested and thrown in jail. Everyone I know.